Wildfires, they are uncontrollable, widespread, destructive, and devastating. Over the past few decades, the number of wildfires and extent of destruction has drastically increased. According to the Insurance Information Institute, in the year of 2017 alone, there was 71,499 wildfires across the United States and 10 million acres were burned. And in 2018, there was about 58,000 wildfires and over 8.8 .8 million acres that burned. These figures are nearly double of what was recorded not too long ago in the 1980s. So what is the cause of these fires and their growing numbers? Are the conspiracies of lasers coming from satellites, microwaves blowing up or people setting the fire themselves for insurance claims really true? Or is the cause much more deep-rooted and tied to an accumulation of actions that suppress the practices of native science and native people? To understand this, we must first understand a different form of wildland fires that were man-made and systematically controlled by the indigenous people for hundreds of years. These were known as controlled burns. Annual burning was a common practice of many native tribes for a number of reasons that were based on principles of indigenous science. Indigenous science, or native science, is an adaptive living knowledge. It is a study of the whole and includes ecological, spiritual, ethical, and social dimensions. Like Western science, its principles hold the same precision and rigor. However, native science is specific to a particular location and offers vast and deep knowledge of that place because of its nature of being acquired through experience and adaptation over a long period of time. According to the indigenous signs of Native Americans, they use controlled burns because burning certain portions of land that was infertile, infested, or fruitless proved to rejuvenate that land once again. Most burning took place in the late summer season after harvest. The burns were used to enhance forage production to attract prey, to eliminate any harmful competition like weeds, or insects, or pathogens, and to boost the production and growth of important plants and animals. For example, the Yurok and Karuk tribes in Northern California used prescribed burns to rejuvenate wormwood and other medicinal plants. They burned the forest undergrowth so that deer and elk would frequent the area and could be hunted easily. The Yurok also used controlled burns to clear up brush and weeds that clogged the stream. This allowed for species like salmon to flourish on the nearby Klamath River. Salmon is a cultural keystone species for the Yurok. Cultural keystone species are species that are of exceptional significance to the culture and are prevalent in their histories, language, culture, practices, diets, etc. For the Yurok, the salmon is an important source of food and is used in many cultural ceremonies. The salmon is also significant in the creation story for the Yurok where they are noted as the salmon people for being gifted the salmon by the spirit of the river Pule Kukwerek. Other uses for controlled burns was to promote the growth of stronger and straighter sticks in the hazel plant. For the Karuk and the Yurok tribes, the hazel plant was a culturally significant species which was used to weave baskets, hats, and cradles. Another species that benefited from the controlled burns was the California black oak. This species is considered an ecological keystone species for its significance to the entire ecosystem. Ecological keystone species play an important role in the ecosystem. They help to maintain local biodiversity by controlling the population of other species that would otherwise dominate the community and by providing critical resources for a wide range of species. Not only do black oak trees provide high quality acorns for tribes to use to make mush, porridge, and bread as sources of food, the black oak is an important habitat and resource for a wide array of animals. A study done on the Sierra National Forest identified 19 bird species that nested in the California black oak, including the acorn woodpecker and the band-tailed pigeon. It also supports animals like the spotted owl and black bears. Controlled burns promote the growth of the black oak trees by creating openings that give shade intolerant black oak the space and resources needed to thrive within conifer dominated forests. In this way, controlled burns help to maintain the biocultural diversity of the land. Biocultural diversity is understood by the relationship and interdependency between both biological diversity and cultural diversity. Controlled burns maintain the biological aspects of the forest, including the trees, aquatic life, and other animals. These are all elements that are culturally significant to the indigenous communities, so cultural diversity also thrives as a result. So how do these anthropogenic wildfires prevent the natural wildfires that are so prevalent in today's day and age? One of the key uses of controlled burns was to prevent unwanted wildfires. 
The burning would clear the forest land of the underbrush and debris and open land of dry grass and shrubs that would otherwise act as fuel for accidental or naturally occurring fires. The Native Americans had successfully learned how to fight fire with fire, and this resulted in not only the ecological conservation of their own environment, but also the preservation of numerous other ecosystems around them that supported a plethora of plants and animals. The Native Americans were able to use controlled burns to sustain their own life and also preserve life around them without disturbing key systems of food chains, symbiotic relationships, and interdependence. Christopher Rue is an archaeologist at the Southern Methodist University states, we need to acknowledge that hunter-gatherers can be active influences in their environment, particularly through their use of fire as a landscape tool. We expect that future studies of human-climate fire interactions will further document the complexity of these relationships. Understanding that complexity may prove important as we try to navigate the complex wildfire problems we face today. The main reason for the catastrophic wildfires that we see nowadays is because of the fire suppression policies and initiatives that have been implemented for the past 100 years. The Forest Service was established in 1905 to manage the nation's forest reserves. It advertised and practiced a nationwide policy of fire suppression and ban burning. One of its slogans advertised by the infamous Smokey Bear was, only you can prevent wildfires. Moreover, Congress passed the Forest Fires Emergency Act in 1908, which established that funding for emergency fire suppression had no specified limits and those expenses would be later reimbursed by Congress as well. This policy favored fire suppression over any other policy. It wasn't until the 1970s that the Forest Service recognized the value of light burning in ecological conservation and allowed some controlled burns to take place under specified conditions. Nowadays, the situation is the same. Local conservation agencies are taking out some initiatives to perform controlled burns that are approved by the Forest Service. For example, in 2016, the Cultural Fire Management Council, in partnership with the Yurok Tribe, the Nature Conservancy, and Terra Fuego, perform cultural burns on Yurok Reservation and ancestral lands. According to a post on the Yurok Tribe Facebook page, they created the Yurok Training Exchange Program, TREX, which was designed to teach local residents with varying degrees of firefighting experience how to execute a successful cultural burn by working side by side with veteran fire instructors. It is programs like these that still strive to keep the practice of cultural burning alive in order to maintain a healthy ecosystem. However, these initiatives are nowhere near what is actually needed to thwart wildfires in the U.S. Fire suppression methods are still being utilized. One of these methods use cat lines. Cat lines are fire containment lines that are constructed using bulldozers. However, cat lines are not only destructive for the environment, they are also now largely ineffective against the extreme weather conditions that result from climate change. According to Timothy Inglesby from Firefighters United for Safety, Ethics, Ecology Organization, cat lines strip off all surface vegetation and initiate soil erosion. It can take hundreds of years to create a few inches of fertile soil in mountainous forests, and this precious resource can be stripped away in minutes with the passing of a dozer's blade. Also, cat lines usually run along ridge lines, but these ridge lines are historic pathways for Native Americans. These areas are rich with artifacts, rock cairns, and tree blazes that mark legacy sites important to Native American heritage and religious ceremonies. An example of this are the ridge lines of Mount Shasta that were important pathways for the Karuk tribe. They were marked by prayer seats and other artifacts indicating ceremonial sites for spiritual practices. Cat lines along ridge lines on the east side of the Car Fire impacted some of these sacred sites and altered them forever. The recent catastrophes that have occurred prove that fire suppression methods that still prevail are not helping and there needs to be more of a revival of controlled burns like the ones done by Trek mentioned before. In the state of California alone, there were back-to-back -back instances of record-setting wildfires including the Camp Fire, which according to Cal Fire statistics resulted in about 153,000 acres burned and 18,800 structures destroyed. The fire burned almost 14,000 residences and about 530 commercial structures. 88 people perished and several were injured. Other notable and devastating fires include the Woolsey Fire, Car Fire, and the Mendocino Complex Fire, all occurring during the year of 2018 in California. What used to be known as the fire season for the native Californians hundreds of years ago has become the fire year for the people of 2018. What has made the situation worse is the response from the Trump administration. According to the Unit of Concerned Scientists.org, 
The Trump administration objective in regard to the wildfires is to prioritize the protection of life and property over endangered species in the areas of California. Their plan to achieve this involves diverting the California water supply and rivers to be used in suppressing fires. However, this water is managed by the National Marine Fisheries Service to ensure the protection of the fish population. Removing water from the rivers will violate the Endangered Species Act by further threatening species like the Delta smelt and the Chinook salmon. Both of these species are critically endangered and more information could be found out about them on the IUCN Red List. Moreover, according to the state officials and firefighters, California has enough water to fight the fires and there is no scientific basis that declares that there is a water shortage. Still, President Trump believes that bad environmental laws are wasting the water that could be used for quote-unquote fires, farming, and everything else. Another solution to the wildfires proposed by the Trump administration is to cut down more trees. Not only will cutting down the trees negatively affect hundreds of species in their habitats, it will not solve the wildfire problem because much of the fire does not happen because of the trees, but because of the grass and shrubs. The only solution is to protect and promote the cultural burnings done by the indigenous people of the location while simultaneously speaking out against the fire suppression policies. There needs to be an effort for cultural revitalization where we can encourage the Native Americans to once again utilize their old ways of burning. Wildlife protection agencies and the Forest Service should partner up with the Native Americans to take on this task. Together with the use of technology as well as traditional ecological knowledge, which delineates the sustainable use of local resources as well as the preservation of the environment, we can bring ecological restoration in the threatened areas. Through the study of ethnobiology, we can understand how crucial it is to prevent these fires and how interdependent we are with the areas they affect. Our call to action must be that we involve ourselves in environmental activism and advocacy to promote cultural burning and speak out against fire suppression. Ways that we can achieve this is by signing petitions against fire suppression and sharing articles and studies done on Native American controlled burns. You can also share this video with your friends and family as well. However, the extent of help and promotion may require more than just armchair activism. I encourage everyone to have discussions and debates about wildfires and controlled burns with their peers. Spread the word, attend webinars and speeches done by veteran fire instructors to learn more on the topic. Attend workshops and volunteer opportunities to have a hands-on experience with learning the techniques of controlled burns and implementing them. Now it's high time for us to take action and prevent yet another fire a year from occurring and destruction prevailing. For ways to help out and learn more about this topic, please visit the websites that are linked in the description. Comment below any other specific active methods of advocacy you know that we can all participate in to help out. Thank you.